Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about rolling things. All right, so we're gonna be making something like this. Although there is a special version to come at the end of this tutorial. So let's take a look at how this is set up. In here, we have all this stuff parented to a null, and that moves it down here. And in the stationary comp, we basically negate that null's movement so that the car doesn't actually move anywhere. So what's interesting, I'm not entirely sure why it works because it doesn't really seem like it should work for any side's wheels, but as you notice, this wheel is pretty locked to the ground and all we have to do to accomplish that is pick whip this position into the rotation property. And then on one of them, I added 50 just so that they're not exactly the same at rest. For these, I have an expression on position that wiggles the vertical movement of the wheel so that our car has a little bit of bounce to it. But to actually get that bounce, we have to figure out where these two wheels are in relationship to each other so that we know what angle the body should be at. So let's look at how we do that. If I turn this on, you can see that we have a line that goes from the hubs of each wheel to the other. As we move down here, that moves with it. So in the body axis layer here, on our position property, we have this expression that basically puts this where the front wheel is. Both of the layers are parented to the null, so we don't have to do any kind of two comp anything. So we grab that front wheel's position in here, and then the rest of our expression is in rotation. I have that copied up here. I modified this from an expression from RenderTom, and you might know him as the developer of a couple of the scripts that I have right now on my screen. And that might be a hint as to what the surprise is. So we have point one equals transform dot position, so it's just that position of the front wheel, and then we have point two equals this comp dot layer back wheel dot transform dot position. And then we're gonna do a little bit of math in here. We're gonna use arc tangent to take the slope between those two points and convert it to an angle. So here we have angle equals math dot a tan two. You want to have that two in there. That's important for this function because that one actually lets you have negative and positive values. So we can kind of figure out the direction of the slope, whether it's going up or down. And so all we're doing is taking the X values here from point one, and we're subtracting that from the X value of point two, comma, the Y value of point one minus the Y value of point two. So that'll give us our slope. And then arc tangent will give us an angle in radians. So to use that in here, we're going to convert it to degrees with radians to degrees, feed it in the angle. And in this case, I had this initially pointing out this way. And that's just because of which point we decided to pick first. So I subtracted 180 to flip it back around this way. So once you have that set up, you're going to parent a lot of the car to that rather than the null itself. So the null is only really going to control what position we are in this car and how the wheels rotate and all the bounciness is determined by the body axis layer. So I have my underbody and the back body of this car parented to that axis layer. So they just move with it. Let me solo those so you can see what they look like right here. It's the underbody and the back part of the car. So it's like the inside of the interior and basically the front hood and the back of the El Camino bed on the other side of the car. So we'll unsolo those, close down the front and the back wheel. All right, so then the body front right here is parented to the axis controller. However, we're adding an additional rotation to it. In this case, all I'm doing is pick whipping the rotation of the body axis layer. So it kind of adds an extra bit of bounce to it. And the only other rotation thing we have on here is Santa's sack, which is delayed. If you want to make the car suspension a little more bouncy, you can use this on the body front as well. So let's grab this real quick and throw it up in the top here so we can see it. So what we're going to do is set up an angle, and that's going to come from this comp dot layer body axis dot transform dot rotation, and then we're going to do value at time time minus one. So it's going to be one second back from the body axis rotation. And then if we open up our body axis rotation right here, you can see it kind of fluctuates between negative point one and like negative three hundred fifty something. It's kind of just crossing the boundary on the edge of that circle. It doesn't go very far from there. So what we're going to do is if that angle is less than negative 180, then we're going to do a plus equals, and that's shorthand for a equals a plus 360. So basically we're going to take the current value of a and add 360 to it. Then we're going to close off that conditional. So that's going to basically make this number from like negative 0.2 to positive 0.2. So we're going to take that range and we're going to remap it with the ease function. We're going to do ease that angle as it goes from negative two to two, this sack is going to go from negative five to five. So if we move this around, you can see it doesn't really go that far. And that's because that really only falls in kind of in the middle of our range. This could probably be negative 0 0.2 to 0 0.2, and that would move a lot more. But this looks fine, so that I left it. So that's basically all the setup on that. So you had to delay it, and if you had different size wheels, this would be a lot more apparent that this is really necessary so that you can have the bounce and everything work with the body. So let's check out something else interesting. Maybe Santa's badass El Camino sleigh doesn't really have wheels. Maybe he needs to fly every once in a while or whatever. So instead, I think he needs to use some reindeer. Unfortunately, reindeer are not circular. So 
Instead, we're going to have to figure out a way to make these things roll properly. We can't just straight up parent them to our null. It's not that simple anymore. So what we're going to do is use a nice little script that RenderTom came up with. We're going to click both of these layers, hit roll it. You can see this turn red, but other than that, nothing really seemed to happen. Now if we go here to rotation, and we drag these both a little bit, you can see that something kind of special happens. We now have reindeer wheels. So let's set this up from zero right here. Let's set this to negative four. Drag this down to the end of the comp. Let's go into here. And there we go. Now Santa's all set. If he needs to fly, he's all good. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And if this awesome rolling functionality seems like something you'd like to use, go check out roll it on aescripts.com. All right, guys, as always, I am Joe from Workbench. Happy holidays, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. My music's so loud, I'm swinging. They're hoping that they gon' catch me riding dirty. Trying to catch me riding dirty. Trying to catch me riding dirty. Trying to catch me riding dirty. Try to catch me riding dirty.